Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And we're back to work on this. This is going to be our CP Express and Transport A train. And you're not going to be seeing much of this part of the project. Maybe a little bit uh, towards the end of the video, but I'm not going to be doing a lot of work on the tractor. What I'm going to be working on mostly this episode is this pile of parts. This is one half of AMT's 28 footer double head header kit. Basically what we have here is all the parts necessary to do one of the trailers and the dolly, the converter that goes between them. And this one I'm building, I won't, I'm not going to say it's 100% stock because there's going to be a few modifications to bring it in line with what CP Express and Transport had as their uh, standard practices. But it's going to be an exterior post van, whereas the other one is going to be a, a different type of construction. I'm going to be using a lot of parts from the kit, but there's going to be some modifications. We'll get to that next episode. This episode, we're going to be working on the exterior post van. Now... Let's see, we have the instructions here, of course. I might actually look at them. But yeah, we're basically going to be building half, actually, if we'll put it like that. So one of the trailers plus the, the converter here. So the only difference is, in terms of overall appearance, the kit has you painting them all snow white, whereas the ones that CP Express had, they were a natural metal, which was a little unusual for CP Express. Normally its trailers were very were a, a very neutral glossy gray, but they did have some exterior post fans and the main pieces of metal here in between they looked like they were natural stainless steel. They certainly were a natural metal finish and they didn't rust. The exterior posts were a different type of metal. Once again, it didn't rust. I don't know if it was aluminum or if it was some sort of galvanized metal, but it definitely had a duller finish than these middle panels. So that's what we're going to be trying to replicate is two types of natural metal finish on here. Now, we won't be doing it this episode but we are going to be putting a very large panel right here that's going to have the CP Express and Transport logo with the Pac-Man on it. So I've got two sprues here. Uh, we've got one more fifth wheel than we need, but basically we have enough wheels here to do the dolly and one of the trailers. Now, I'm pretty sure, like 90% sure, that the trailers had blue wheels. Um, but I'm 100% sure that the wheels were not chrome. So I'm going to hit these with some oven cleaner to uh, blow off most of the chrome. And then, uh, and then we'll be able to paint them whichever color we decide to go with. Like I said, I'm 90% sure that they were blue. So while I'm waiting for my oven cleaner to do its work, I'm going to put together the dolly or as much as I can. There's a couple parts there that are chrome. But I think I've got most of the parts separated out. Sadly, like the Louisville kit, there's, there's numbers, but they don't correspond to anything on the sprues. But most of them you can figure out based on how they look. Well, the flash isn't extreme, but there are some areas that do have some flash. They'll have to be cleaned up. Not the worst I've ever seen. All right, I have two attaboy good jobs for AMT. One is genuine and one is sarcastic, and neither one of them works to my advantage. The first one is, is you can see the results of my efforts to de-chrome their chrome sprues here. And wow, this has to be some of the hardest chrome I've ever had to remove. This was on there. This was probably four applications of oven cleaner to get to the to this stage now this is fine this is usable i can i can deal with this but this was a lot of work 
Um, I don't know exactly what particular formulation AMT used on this, but this was really good, strong chroming. It was just a lot of work for me to undo. The second attaboy, good job, which is sarcastic, is the, the wheel detail. So we can see all of the wheels are like this. And let's compare it to the ones that are in the, uh, the Louisville kit here. So if we look carefully, we can see that this one has lug nuts. <laughs> None of the ones in the trailer kits have lug nuts in there. It's kind of bare. Now I know the inner set here don't have lug nuts. Well, who cares? You can't see those. But the outer ones definitely kind of need lug nut detail. It's not going to be impossible to correct. All I have to do is just slices of styrene rod in there. But it's still something I'll have to be done. Like, really? Did you forget to put those in there or what? What you're looking at here is um, they give you three of these. And it's basically the air reservoir that's going to be used underneath each of the trailers and the dolly as well. Now, as you can see, it has a very large hole in the top of it. Now, that's fine if you're putting it on the underside of the trailer and you can't see it. But the dolly, even with the fifth wheel in place, at least when you have it like disassembled, you can look down and see that. So what I've done is I've taken one of the air tanks. Just gonna focus on it here. And I've wrapped a piece of styrene around it. And I'm gonna file it in order to get rid of this big grungy line here. But hopefully this will end up giving us a nice solid, no, that's not right. <laughs> air tanks are hollow. Uh, at least it'll give us an air tank with it a giant hole in the top of it. So our dolly continues to come together and you can see this is my air tank that I've healed up the big gap. This is what it looked like before. Now this would be perfectly fine underneath the trailer but here you know now I know most of the time I'm going to be displaying it together but um, if we put the fifth wheel on, you can still see underneath and you'd be able to see that there was a, there was a gap. Another bit of corrective surgery was this part here. And this wasn't AMT's fault. Um, this is the part, the way it came out of the box. This whole piece right here had snapped off and it wasn't even inside the bag. So I don't know where it went to, but a little bit of scrap styrene from the hobby bench, I managed to basically copy this part onto here. So this is the axle and the brake chambers, I believe, go here and here. Now, if money were no object, the model railroading industry has what are known as nut bolt washer castings, which is basically just a tiny little plastic part that's the bit of a of a nut and bolt that you can see and with a with a washer as well all right if you were going to do 10 of these per wheel that'd get expensive pretty quickly so i just take some of this very fine styrene rod you can see compared to my finger what size it is i i don't know once once i get the plastic out of the bags i I just go with what looks right. I don't remember what size they are. But what I do is I'll slice it into the little chunks. And then you can see you just glue them around the, uh, the center part of your wheel. And to the naked eye, and most of our eyesight is not that great, it gives the appearance that, that you've got the nuts and bolts in there that should be there. Um, I know it's not super perfect, but it's way better than what's there, which is nothing. And it's a few hours later, and I have my frame for my dolly ready for paint. 
This is going to be blue. A lot of them were gray, but I remember a couple that were definitely blue. And I'm going to be painting all of my trailer wheels blue. I know some of them were. A lot of them probably weren't, but I'm going from my memory that the wheels were blue. Probably wrong, but that's what's that's what my probably flawed memory is telling me is blue. So I'm going to end up using Tamiya Sky Blue. And it's probably not exact. Um, but honestly, the color varied from truck to truck. Like you could have five CP Express trucks all on a row. And honestly, <laughs> they all had a very slightly different blue. Even if they were all made by International, they all seem to have a slightly different blue. Now, I know probably they faded a little bit differently and things like that. But uh, I always got the sense that CP Express, you know, kind of changed their standards a lot over time. So we're going to go with Tamiya Sky Blue. And that matches what I used on the little end scale ones. And I'm happy with the way they look. So that's what we're going to go with. And of course, when I run out, it should be easy to get more. And we've got our dolly back from paint. It's not going to be this uniform when it all is said and done. Now, the bits that are unpainted here, they face into the wheels. You can see the back sides have been painted rust. Um, there's going to be some more detailed painting done on this. Plus, there's going to be a lot of dry brushing of rust on this because this is Canada A. And everything that travels on our roads inevitably gets really nasty and rusty. Uh, let's see. We've got the wheels assembled here. And once again, they're going to have a fair share of uh, rust staining on them. The lug nuts are mostly going to have a little bit of... Um, dark or is it dark iron to me iron what's it called here uh, here we go yeah dark iron love a little bit of dark iron dry brush on the nuts um because you know even if they were painted by the time they've been taken on and off a couple times there's not much paint left on there and we also have the fifth wheel you can see the back side of it it was also painted with Tamiya Dark Iron. The top is going to be painted with steel. And I think, yeah, I did the same thing with the one that's going to be going on the truck as well. And these parts, I'm not sure. So I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. The fifth wheels, I'm pretty sure, are not allowed to be painted. Mainly because it's a safety item and you want it to be obvious if there's a crack or whatever. Um... Generally, the top surface, even though it's it's unpainted um, cast iron or cast steel, um, it should not be rusty because these have, um, they've got grease basically gets squirted all over them. Now, I remember like once a month, uh, somebody would come to the CP Express terminal and they used to like, they had a caulking gun and they would just like, put like toothpaste like strips of this grease all over the fifth wheels of the trucks that were sitting parked. So if a truck sits long enough and this grease gets washed off, then yeah, but I mean a truck's got to sit for a long time really for that grease layer to uh, to be uh, stripped off and for it to rust. Of course, this kit comes with tires that have the dreaded spiders molded in the middle. Um, they're always a pain to remove. I usually take the nippers and um, snip them out as close as I can to the outside of the tire and then I'll use a very sharp number 11 blade to finish cleaning them up. Let's not knock the camera off here. But other than having a little, little spider here in the middle um, they are very, very nice wheels. They've got Firestone molded in them, and uh, it says they're Firestone Transports. All right, I've had the camera off, 
as I've been kind of launching into assembly of our first trailer here. We got the underside, and I don't know if we're going to be able to pick it up on. I think we can. You can see there's some circles, or what's remains of some circles. These are the ejector pin marks. And I know 99.99% .99 of the time this is going to be sitting on its wheels, but I ended up filing them all off because there's an awful lot of them on there. It was relatively easy to file them off. And I have the suspension unit for the trailer together right there. And a lot of the parts are common to the dolly haul. So the converter that goes between the two. Um, anyway, it went together without any huge problems. Um, I was missing a part again. Uh, probably not AMT's fault. Probably fell apart or came out in the bag. And that was um, one of the actuating rods here for the brakes. One of those was missing. But once again, that's probably not AMT's fault. Probably came off in the bag. And when I took the parts out, it went pew flew off and the carpet monster got it. So this is very close to going on the underside. Um, the only thing I still have to put together for the underside is the landing gear and you can see I've gotten a start on the on the uprights. I am an idiot. So this is probably going to be a regular part of our videos from here on in. It's going to be the Dan is an idiot segment. And the reason that we have a Dan is an Idiot segment this time is, recall that earlier in the video I mentioned that off of the two sprues that I took the chrome off of, which were identical, um, and, then they, and then they both had the fifth wheels on them, that I mentioned that there was no lug nuts in any of the wheels. You can see here's the wheels, and... I added the lug nuts, no big deal. I'm used to doing things like this. So, as you can see, here we have most of the underside detail of trailer number one is glued on. One of the things we need is the gearbox for the landing gear crank. And the instructions are saying that's a chrome plated part. Well, uh, they're not on these. I mean, we have a spare fifth wheel we don't need, but nowhere do we have that gearbox. So I knew I still had a couple of chrome sprues, which I thought were identical to the ones I stripped. And I'm like, well, maybe they're on that one. So I grabbed it, and yep, here's our chrome sprue, and it's all blazing glory. And look, we've got, there's that air tank, there's the the uh, the brake diaphragms and everything like that. And I'm like, oh, there is a difference between the chrome sprues because there's no fifth wheel on here. Oh, okay, that's cool. And then I look at the wheels. These ones have the lug nut details in there. So all the work I did to, you know, to, to put the lug nuts in there, I didn't need to do it. And the second one, same thing. So, but that does mean that we've got a lot of extra parts in this kit. I mean, we're going to have an extra air tank and we're going to have some extra brake diaphragms. And I think we have enough parts to build an entire extra dolly without wheels, which is pretty cool. So once again, Dan's an idiot. <laughs> so my next step here for our underside is... I picked up some gray primer from Walmart because I just want the underside of this to be basic gray. We'll rustify it afterwards, but before I go gluing anything onto it, I just want to hit this with some flat gray paint, and then we'll just mask off the sides when we go to paint the rest of it. Well, it's a bit lighter gray than what I intended, but I can darken it up with some washes, and of course, as I said before, we're going to be doing some rust staining and streaking on it. I definitely think it was worth the time to just hit it with a spray bomb. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the rear, the rear frame for the door on first, and then I'll work my way forward. As you can see, we're getting the main box 
assembled here. And I just thought I'd bring one thing up. Um, if we zoom in here, get a good focus on that. The, the, the floor detail in this thing is amazing. It has beautiful wood grain in it. If it wasn't for the fact that the underside has all those ribs in it, I think I'd probably save this part for, I don't know, some future project where I needed a wood deck or something. <laughs> the, the, the floor in this is so nice. The sides, on the other hand, well, they're okay, but we've got all of these uh, sink marks, ejector pin marks, so they'd be kind of a pain to clean up. Now, in case you're wondering, I am not going to be building this with the door functional. I did that on the Coke truck, and I just don't think it's worth it. Um, you know, despite the fact that we have such a beautiful floor in here, I, I don't think we need to be trying to show that off. Since I'm not going to be building this as a working door, um, I didn't follow the instructions on that. You're supposed to slice all these into pieces, slide them in the track, and then put a piece of tape on the back of it. And they suggest a piece of masking tape. When I've done this in the past, I've used a, a piece of duct tape just in the hopes that it will be a little bit more permanent. But anyway, I didn't see the point in cutting it all apart, so I just scribed the lines on this side. So that way I don't have any, any misalignment or anything like that in the future. It'll still all stay in one piece. All right, we have the sides and the roof. Everything all glued together in one large hollow box. And what I'm going to be doing is... Um, I recall there was three basic uh, trailer designs that CP Express had. And the one that this trailer is closest to, it was an exterior post design, but it was basically natural metal finish. It wasn't painted gray like most of their trailers. Um, and these areas seem to have been a natural stainless steel. I'm not sure. I mean, we're going back over 20 years. Um, whereas the posts... They were natural metal as well, but they weren't as shiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, Tester's steel for the panels. And then I'm going to use, I think I'm probably going to use Tester's aluminum for the posts. So it's going to be quite a bit of... Um, It's going to be quite a bit of masking, but hopefully this, this comes out the way I want it to. Now the door itself is going to be painted gloss gray. And the roof, I think I might end up making that gloss gray as well. Okay, so I give up. I quit. I'm not going to get the trailer done or trailer number one done in this episode. That was my plan. It's not going to happen. Um... I've got the steel on, but I still have to put a gloss coat on. I still have to mask out all the ribs, do those in a slightly different silver. Um, I was trying to rush things, and I ended up with some paint runs that I've since fixed. And there comes a point where you have to realize that you're rushing things, and you just need to slow down a bit. I've got... Some things are going to keep me busy for a couple days. So, you know what? Why rush things? It's supposed to be a hobby. So, this is going to be it for this episode. I think we're around the 25-minute mark. Anyhow, so I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Until next time, just keep on modeling.